Hi everyone, welcome to the Triassons Martial Arts Channel. Now in the last video, the definition of internal and external Chinese martial art, we've discussed just what constitutes internal and external, where this classification came from, who invented it and why. In this video, we're going to attempt to take a further look into the merit of such classification. In other words, Sun Lutang did split you know, Chinese martial into two categories, internal and external, but why did he do so? You know, other than the fact that he trended, you know, he trained himself in the three primary internal styles. That's not the re actual reason. I mean, that's part of the reason, but that's not the, the, the main reason, so to speak. I mean, he also trained in Shaolin and other martial arts, but he did not include them in this classification. So why did he include Tai Chi Xing Yi Ba Gua into one larger classification while excluding all the others. Okay, today we'll discuss the similarities between all the internal styles and how it differs from various branches of external styles. We'll bring it up to the next part of the video where we'll discuss why these styles belong in the same system and why external styles are different from internal styles, right? And of course, now, now we really should know the difference is not because one has Qigong or internal training, the other one don't. That's not it. Okay, it has to do with the entire structure of the style, what they believe in, and how they go about doing training. Now, any of you that have done Chinese external martial arts, you should know that uh, horse style right, is the most basic and fundamental training. Almost all the you know, authentic external Chinese martial arts school do horse styles. But none of the internal martial arts school does horse dance. Now this is the first important point, an interesting point of that. Now you think about it, exactly what is the point of horse dance, okay? Why people do it? And if you ask all the teachers out there who teach horse dance, they'll give you reasons, but none of the reasons actually make sense, okay? Because they will say it trains your leg strength, but why do you need that leg strength, okay? In martial arts, you train Anything you train is for a purpose. Now, what is the purpose of that kind of leg strength? People might say, you know, when you punch, you push with your leg. But yes, if you want to push with your leg, squatting is way better, which is why in modern combat sport, you do squatting. You don't do, um, you know, do horse stunts. Okay, so one is where you bend and push up. It trains explosiveness. In fact, you know, the, uh, you know, training that you don't do slow squat, you, you do faster squat, you do explosiveness, right? You want to explode so you can jump out, you can shoot. Under the leg, you can throw punches, push with the leg better. So when Chinese people do horse dance, it's more about endurance, right? You're training the muscle to endure over a long period of time. Right? I'm sure you heard the tale of people you know, talking about how the olden day muscle will do horse dance for half an hour, an hour, or even two hours in some extreme cases. I mean, why do you want to do that? Why train endurance on the leg, okay? And keep in mind that those kind of endurance that doesn't naturally translate into explosiveness part. It doesn't translate into explosiveness, right? Those are two type of muscle functions. So if you can do stand in the horse down for an hour, it doesn't mean you can explode with your leg. It doesn't mean you have solid leg and structure. Not structure, you have solid leg and solid stance, right? Um, if you can, if your leg is that strong, it's hard to sweep your, your, your leg, which is one of the benefits. But other than that, why do people train horse stance? And that's one question that a lot of people couldn't answer. Okay. Um, the simple reason is that horse dance is a remnant from an older version of Chinese martial art. Now, if you think about Chinese martial art historically, right, the, the empty hand portion, which we, know, which we now call Chinese martial art, only came about in the late Ming Dynasty, you know, throughout. There was no clear record of hand-to-hand -hand combat before Ming Dynasty. Okay, back then people simply had weapons, right, they didn't need to fight with their hands. Um, Obviously, this is going to be like a history thing, so we're not going to go into detail today, but just know that before Ming Dynasty, or before late Ming Dynasty, people fought with weapons most of the time. There's no need to use your hand. When everyone can carry weapons, you don't need hands, especially in Song Dynasty, right? If you look at uh, any of the record, even the novel, Hero of the Water March, you see that you know, people have weapons everywhere. They don't need to fight with their hands. So hand fighting became a thing when weapons were banned from civilians. And... So, the original Chinese martial art, I would say, is heavily influenced by military training, okay? And the horse dance in Chinese, Ma Bu, is other longer name that is called Qi Ma, Dun Dang Shi. Okay, what that means is, it's called 
a horse riding pose. So from this, you can see that the horse dance is actually simulating riding a horse. And if you think about it in this line, it all makes sense because when you're riding, okay, I don't know if you, you have ridden a horse before, but when you're riding a horse, you don't actually sit on the saddle, right? I don't even know why they have that saddle, but you can't sit on, on it. If you sit on the shadow, saddle while the horse runs, uh, yeah, you just, you have a headache. Very soon, the horse is very, you know, he bounces up and down. So if you keep your butt on it, it's very uncomfortable. So what actually happened is, you put your feet in, and you actually tuck the horse with your leg, and, you, and your butt is lifted, okay? So you almost like you are standing on the horse, right? In the, in the horse dog, rather than, than sitting on the horse. Which is why riding actually requires pretty strong leg strength. And so one of the more likely possibilities is that, you know, the soldier who retired and, uh, you know, eventually forced to invent hand-to-hand -hand combat went back to their route, which is, you know, military training. So you imagine that, you know, when before a person ride a horse, they were first trained to have leg strings. And also, you know, there's a time where you can't ride a horse and do training, you would just train without a horse in the horse dance. And I mean, if you also think about it, right, if you're doing a horse, if you stand a horse down, even like in karate, right, they train the punches like this, but nobody ever fight like this, because this is a stupid stance, your whole body exposed, your groin exposed, your body exposed, everything exposed, right, people don't fight like this. Why train the stance that you're never going to fight in? It's because it's a, tr it's a tr tradition, right, one of the characteristics of Eastern martial art is tradition. So they will do stuff that their forefathers have done without asking the reason why, and they'll keep doing it until the original reason has long been forgotten, but they'll still be doing it, which is why Chinese martial arts today still do horse dance. You know, karate today still do horse dance and they're punching. If you ask them, they will say they try to leg strings, try to balance, they trans whatever. But you know, the, the truth is you can actually skip all of that and you, and you do just fine. That's because this is a training of the olden a reminiscence of the olden day where people need to ride horses. Now same with both down, right? Both dance. It's an infantry stance where you hold a spear. And you know that you stand like this because infantry got to be packed, right? Uh, people next to, to each other, so you don't have space. And also, you know, you, you minimize the amount of surface people can attack you. And also it's fit better with a spear. So the horse and the bow stance are all actually reminiscent of military training days. They actually serve very little or very or not a very efficient purpose in hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? Which is why if you look at modern combat sport, they don't do horse downs, they don't do bow downs, but they do just fine. Now, if you compare horse downs to internal martial arts downs, we'll see that they are fundamentally different, okay? Um, horse downs, due to the nature of the way you stand, your body will always lean forward, okay? Even if, you know, someone will say, like, yeah, well, I try horse down, I keep my body upright to train the leg strength. It's good, right? If you can, do especially a low horse down, right, which I'm not going to do, but if you do a very low horse and your body is up straight, it does show that you have you know, great leg strength and control. But if you stand like that, let somebody push you, you're going to fall over, you have no balance at all. So this down, while it's impressive, it serves zero purpose. Okay? So to be able to balance in a horse down, your body needs to lean forward. Okay? And if your body leans forward, your butt sticks out, and your body bends, right, in like a zigzag. Which is why you see all the external martial that that horse dance, if you look from the sound and doing stuff, you know, their body is actually bent. It's not up, it's not completely upright, unless they do a very high stance, but in which case, there's actually no point doing a horse dance at, at, at all. Their body is bent. So in Chinese, we call this the swallow pose. But I don't know why, but uh, they, they call this the swallow pose. Um, and this goes directly against the values of internal martial art. So if you watch my video on the four core forces of internal, you should already spot this, right? In internal style, you want the, the tailbone to tuck in, right? You want the spine to be straight. You want the head and the tailbone to be in one line, perpendicular to the ground. And you want the body to be able to compress and expand and rotate. If you stand like this, you can't compress your spine, you can't expand your spine, and it's very hard to rotate on the vertical app, right? You can rotate this way. But you know, then you are rotating like that. And the power you generate is gonna be skewed as well. Right? The reason you want to be in a vertical axis is when you generate power the rotation, uh, the force will go out without hinder. But if you like this and you rotate, you know you're rotating like this, so the force is not it's not spinning like this an anymore. 
So which is why internal stock does not do horse dance at all. I mean the closest you get to is probably Yi Quan who has you know Huan Zhuang. So if you look closely, your Huan Zhuang has very high stance, they never bend the leg. It's not about the leg strength, also because you do when you bend your leg, your body lean forward, right? They want to keep the leg very high in order for them to be tuck in the tailbone, keep the body up straight, and then have the qualities of internal martial art. So that's the so probably the closest you get to a horse stance. Um, other styles such as Xing Yi, you know, have this it's a Xing Yi stance, Ba Gua actually just works, Tai Chi does Wu Ji stance, which is even higher, it stands like this. Again with the same quality. And Tong Bei don't have a stance at at, at or well, don't train particular on the stance at all. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the the purpose behind it, right? We've already discussed in external martial art horse stance believed to give you roots, strings on your legs, and make you you know make your movement have a better form, so to speak, right? They, they believe that if you don't have horse downs, your movement will be all wobbly and, and incorrect, your leg will be like skewed and stuff, but if you try a lot of horse down, you're able to punch clearly, have strong steps, and do, you know, clean, crisp, crisp mo um, pose, shall I say. But, but mostly it's to train leg strength, okay? If you look at the internal martial arts purpose of training, stance training is completely different, okay? Stance is not about leg strength. I mean, in some of them, Okay, you know, Shi, you do train some leg strength, but that is not the most important thing. What you actually are after in any internal style is the overall connection, right? The reason you hold style for a long time is not to have godly leg strength, but to force your body to form a new habit. Okay, whether it is a habit to hold out your posture like this, or habit to hold out your posture like, like, like this. Okay, depending on the style, you're after a different structure. But the whole point of doing stunts is to reinforce that structure. Through a long period of time, you emphasize that structure so much that eventually your body will, will go into that structure without you even having to, to think about it. The moment you hold out your hand, the two elbows is already connected and pushing outwards. The shoulder blade is already extended. The back and the hand is already pushing against e each other. All the internal quality that you train is there no matter what movement you do. Okay? Same with Xing Yi. You know. The whole point of doing stunts to get into that zone. That anytime you do any motion, the quality of the stance, which is the quality of the structure for that style, comes out naturally. Okay, so it, it does trend legs in some instance, but it's not the important thing. The important thing is overall structure. Which is also why internal style trends down for much longer. Right? External style, you know, although some of them claim they do horse down for an hour, most of, most of them do it for five minutes, 10 minutes top, right? If you do low horse down for an hour, not only is it nearly impossible, it will break your knees, right? Uh, you know, do that for a year, you probably will have to, to replace your knee. So um, don't believe in your own old, old myths. So the low stances give you, it, it's more exercise in a shorter period of time. But internal style don't want that. They want to prolong the stance for as long as possible, which is why, like in my Tai Chi lineage, we do, you know, Wuji stance for two hours. And you know, in when you do train each one, we do you know this with the Huan Yuan Zhuang or Ji Ji Zhuang for an hour minimum. Okay, so the time period is much longer compared to external style that does, does horse stunts. And the purpose, of course, you know, is completely different. So this is the first thing that differs between internal styles and external styles. And you can see why internal style, you know, can kind of merge into one classification because they share the same idea of training, and. Then, and this also brings to the next thing, right? Internal style of training, the, most of the internal style of training is through stunts, okay? I mean, there are movement after, but the rough idea of the progression in a nutshell is you do stunts to find the structure, then you do set movement to see how you can maintain that structure when you're moving, right? For example, I've done this in my each video, but I'm just gonna quickly recap. In each one, you stand in the stunts to find the six directional force. And then you start moving and see, okay, now if I'm moving, can I still maintain that 6 original force? If I can do move like this and maintain that, can I move sideways? Can I move, you know, in a, in a circular way? Can I move vertical circle? So all of these motions are there to see if you can maintain that same thing you find from stance in every different directional force. Same with Xing Yi, right? You find that stance, you want to see if you can, you know, ma maintain that structure, that, that, that body mechanic through Zuan, through P, through whatever other of the five elemental punches. Same with Ba Ba Gua. 
you find the spiral force here, and then you see you know, Kalman Tennis Rock Force when they're doing single palm change, like doing double palm change. So it's both a palm that structure, which means when you do stomp for a certain amount of time, you start doing this, you know, Shi Li, for example, and you find that, okay, I'm lacking something on my back, I'm lacking something on my leg, or lacking something here and there, you go back to stomp and you find it again. And then you go back and do that. It's a back and forth, back and forth until you find what you're missing. Okay? And that's pretty much all there is to an internal style. I mean, it is deep, it is more complicated than that, but that's in a natural how it is. External style, however, is very different, right? Uh, they will have horse down for the legs, you have to push up for the arms, or like, you know, um, dumbbells, like there's a stone dumbbell that Chinese people used to use to have to, you know, to pull up some of the styles. So they do a lot of different training for different things, okay? That's another major di difference. They believe in training muscles through different external means. I mean, not saying they don't have internal training, but they do a lot of external training for the muscles. Where internal style pretty much does everything through stance and this motion, right? Uh, you don't want muscular strength, like I've explained in my core, uh, the four core forces of internal martial arts, because excessive amount of muscle actually hinders the transference of, of, of force through the bone skeleton structure. Actually, you know, that's what I was talking in the uh, video on the physics behind internal style. So if you haven't seen it, you can check that out for more detailed explanation. But the point is, internal style isn't after muscles, okay? It is after the overall body structure and you're passing force through skeletal and joint structure. With external style, they will focus so as each part of the body. Legs with horse downs, push up or cat stretch with the arms, and you know, sit ups and extra, extra, etc, etc. So one can see that internal style, any of those, those internal styles, everything can be encompassed in a stance training. Whereas in external style, you do your horse downs and you have to do a lot of other exercises for other things, right? It's not all inclusive. So that is how the two sides differ in terms of training. Now, now we've already briefly touched on structure, okay? So if you've seen the core forces of internal, you're able to tell the, the difference in structure. But now we can also talk briefly on the difference in the emotion, okay? So structure, we've already said, your body coming forward, your head coming forward, you tell me how to be tapped in, all of that. But also the way you move. External style, because it came from military training, so on foot, it mostly adopted the spear mentality, which is side stomp, right? So you can, you can see a lot of old school martial arts, even you know, in all the old uh, short brother Hong Kong Kung Fu flicks, you see that they have a side stance, okay? Um, like Bruce Lee, all of that. It's because this is the spear stance, okay? And the problem with the stance is you have one hand that has more rich, but very, very weak punch, and the back hand has strong punch, but very short reach, right? You can see the two reach, you know, this one has way more reach, and this one, if I want to reach there, I have to completely turn my body, which destabilizes my stance, as well as it also um, a lot slower. This works for spear, right, because back in there you hold the spear here, and you're able to, to, to stab someone, and you have to pull it back. Now with punches, it's actually not that great, but back in the days, they didn't really have a lot to work with, right? Imagine people who have military training, who came home, forced to invent a way to fight with a hand, they naturally revert back to what they know, which is, you know, punching in a way like they were training with the spears. As a result, they lack the ability to fight with two hands simultaneously, which is something that, you know, modern combat sport is great at, right? In boxing, you can see, look, there's a, there's a jab and a cross, a strong punch, a weak punch, you know, weak punch, strong punch, but both hands have work, can work very close to each other, right? You can throw combos with both hands helping each other out. Whereas the, at least the Chinese northern external styles, that's very rare, right? If you look at the form, I mean, yeah, let me just, you know, uh, do some generic form, right? If you look at the form, it's very, um, you know, it's this hand, then that hand. And when that hand punches, this hand is nowhere near it to, to compensate. Okay, and then, you know, it's, it's very, you know, I don't really know any of the form by heart, but you can see it's very, the movements are too big for the two hands to work closely with one another, right? Uh, it's like this hand punches and this hand goes away, then that hand can punch, and then you have the kick, and then this hand punches, but that punches somewhere else, and they have to come back. It's kind of awkward, so to speak, in terms of, of structure. Now, 
Intel stall, however, don't have this problem. Because you can see in Yixuan, for example, the stance is here, so two hand is always here. It's actually quite similar to Modern Combat Sport. You can throw punches this way, this way, this way. You can block the punch, punch there, pull up, pull down. So it all happens right here. There is no motion like that. Okay. Now this I'm talking about northern external style, right? So stuff like long foot, long first category, such as you know, uh, Mei Hua Quan, Fan Zi Quan, Yan Qing Quan. All of those stuff, right? They have this problem of a side stance with you know, with punches like like, like that. Okay, so internal style, um, Yi Yi Quan, the hand are right, right here. Xing Yi, although the stance came from a spear, so to speak, but it's not that stance anymore, right? It's, it's a kind of modified, this. so the two hands are still working very close to each other. It's not like that. And Ba Gua, right, although it looks like a sideways stance, you know, in, in some degree, but this hand is actually right by here, so the, the, the two hands are still very close to each other. And of course Tong Bei, right, the hand is always here. I mean, there are, there are big motions, but it's never like this type of motion, you know. How to explain with word, but I'm sure you can see the, the difference. And Tai Tai Chi too, right? Um, I mean, okay, in the form of Tai Chi, you know, some of them have similar motion to the external style, such as, you know, Shan, Shan, Shan Tong Bei, which is like that, and um, Dan Bian, so they do look like external styles, but if you look at the actual push hand training, the two hand is always here, right? They don't push hand with one hand and then with that, the other hand. So what this shows is that the form actually bear resemblance of its external parent. Or shall I say Chen style bear ex resemblance from an external style. So, so Chen was almost like a hybrid, you know, or like a bridge between external and internal. When it comes to Yang style, it became internal, but the form still bears resemblance from the olden day where it's a, you know, it was invented for external purpose, right? If you look at the, the Yang Tai Chi form, it actually has very similar move to Qi Ji Guang's uh, army training manual. Like Dan Bian, you know, and uh, Lo Xi Ao Ao Bu, all of those motions are there. So you can see that it was originally an external style, but later as it developed, the application, the understanding, the method of combat became internal, but they kept the form as it is because, like I said, in China, any age in general, you respect heritage and custom. You don't just change what your, your father taught, taught you. Which is why a lot of these resemblances became confusing later on when they forgot the, the original purpose of doing them. Okay, so there's another big difference of internal style and external style is the one that uses two hands consecutively, the other one, they kind of have to turn their body and rotate their, their stance due to spear mentality. Alright, now some of you might say, okay, but that means the sudden external styles are actually very similar to internal. And yes, you are right, right? If you look at Wing Chun, the hand is here, right? It's very close, it's very, you're able to do left and right hand simultaneously. The two hands can help each other out in combo. Uh, Hong Ge, yes and no, right? There, there are some aspects where the hand are, are together, but there are also aspects where they have a, um, you know, singular stones. Um, you know, like there and there. So there are traces of both. But there are part where, you know, when they have the, 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 the stones and the hand does kind of help each other out. And of course, styles like um, Southern Mantis or all the hot cut styles, right? All the, I mean, Southern styles, there are two sections, right? You have either the Canton styles, the five family, and you have the hot cut style, which came from Fu, Fu Jian. All the hardcore stars are, are also right, the hands are always together, so they're able to, to do combo with both, both hands rather than having a wide stance and only, only one hand to be able to do one thing at a time. So, yeah, in that regard, southern external stars are more similar to internal stars than the northern external stars. It's also why, that, you know, in my personal opinion, I think the southern external stars are slightly better than the northern external stars. Okay, the northern external stars. I mean, there are people who say, no, but I train those external stars, I can also fight. But if you look at the way they fight, they fight like San San Da, right? If you want to fight like boxing, then sure, but then why do you even need to train the external stars to begin with, right? What does these, um, what does these form, 
you know, it's gonna help. What what is form actually gonna help you when you're just gonna find like boxing? So if you look at the form itself, the northern external stars are not as well adapted to combat as the southern external stars, right? Whereas the hand can work with close relationship with each other, you can do a lot of better combos and pressure the person. So yes, southern external in my opinion is a lot better. But it is still not yet the same as internal star, right? And it's for these few points. First of all, southern external star heavily emphasized on muscular strength, right? Or the, what they call dynamic tension. Which again, is not wrong. It's not right and wrong when it comes to muscle or structure, okay? Or, or, or skeletal structure, shall I say, because uh, they also believe in structure. So it's not right and wrong, it's just a matter of preference, okay? And I've explained this more in detail in the video on the physics of internal martial arts. So you can watch that if you haven't. We're not going to go through any more details here. But the, truth, but the fact remains that the southern external martial art trains heavily on muscle, right? They, you know, they will have, they have to like tense up and, and do that. So they train the muscle, whereas in internal style, you actually want to relax the muscle and feel the skeleton, the tendon pulling, right? Not the muscles. So that's a one fundamental difference. Similarity-wise, they all have, they share a similar view on body structure, right? If you look at the, the Hakka stars in particular, right? not Honga. Honga actually has the classical northern kind of stance, where like, you know, it's a low horse stance, butt sticking out, body slightly toe forward. So that part is very, except this stance, obviously. So Honga is a little weird. They have this stance, which is you know, more in line with internal body structure, but they also have wider stance, which is more in line with northern external martial body structure. So Hong Kong is a little weird, well, all the five family, right? They, all, they share the same roots, they're a little weird. But if you look at uh, the Hakka system of Southern style, they have very similar view to body structure, right? So you can see that they also tuck in their tailbone, right? You never see them sticking their butt out. If you see uh, you know, a Hakka practitioner sticking their butt out, they're probably not too genuine. So they always tuck this in and they arch their body. The head don't really care about pulling up, but it's not like completely tilted, so that's still fine. So if you look at them from a, you know, a basic perspective, they're quite similar understanding. And they also believe that the back needs to expand out, so that when there's a force here, then you can receive it with your whole body rather than just with your arms. So these things are similarities to internal style. So I would say yes, higher style are closer to what internal style believes in than the other external martial arts in China. But the difference other than, okay, besides the hard muscle part, other difference is understanding on using weight, and this is the most key, uh, key difference between the two. In internal martial arts, we talk about the four forces, right? One of the forces is called the relaxed sinking force. And part of the quality of relaxed sinking force is rebound. In other words, I want to drop my weight, rebound that weight through my structure and hitting the person. Okay, this is a very confusing concept, and I'll be discussing more about it in the coming videos that you know, explains the, in detail the, core, the four core forces, the four fundamental forces of internal martial arts. So that will come at a later stage. But for now, just know that internal martial arts believe in shifting the weight, bouncing off the ground, and using that weight to hit people, which is why they make one strike per step. Okay, if you look at Xing Yi, when they do P Quan, it's one step. And when they do another P Quan, to do another step. You never see them do pi quan like this. Same with bong quan, right? You don't see people bong quan like this. They take a step, bong quan, take another step, bong quan, another step, bong quan. And the same will go for ba right? If you see ba wa, they don't stand here and do a lot of moves. It's always step, step, one step, one move, one step, one move, one step, one move, one step, one move. There might be rare exceptions in ba form, where you seemingly like you step on moving, you know, maybe here to there, but you actually still shifting your weight. The weight always shifts whenever you generate power. Same with each one, right? When I'm standing here, I'm doing punches. When I punch like this, my weight shift back. Punch like this, my weight shift forward. Weight shift back, shift forward, shift back, shift forward, shift back, shift forward. It's always shifting. And same with a uh, tombe, right? If I do a, a, a mid punch. If, even if I step into the punch, if I want to punch with this hand again, I'm going to shift my way back and I'm going to punch again. Okay, so um, you know, if I do shy jump, I'm going to go forward. But from here, I'm not going to do
do anything like this. If I do another move, do it, I'll have to shift my weight again, and then shift again. The reason for this is because you can only generate rebound force when you are shifting your weight. Okay, you can't do that if you are stationary balanced. And one of the key importance of internal martial art or the key belief is you want to use your weight to hit people. But like I say in the you know in the physics video, you don't hit people with your weight by leaning over them or throwing yourself onto them, right? That is just bad. That's, that's, that's completely bad. But you do so by very careful designed body me mechanic. But it all requires you to shift your step and your weight. Now compared to such an external style, they don't do that, right? Often you there's something that in the style that they call one step, three arrow. What that means is they are actually fond of taking one step and then doing three moves, right? Okay. And then taking another step and doing three moves. So often you see that although they share the same body structure, at least you know, from the outside, if you overlook the, the tensing of the muscles, so although that looks the same, they'll take a step and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll do a few things and then they'll take another step and they'll do a few things. In the eyes of internal martial arts, then this is not good, this is wrong, right? We don't want this. We want to always take one step and do one thing, take another step and do another thing. If I step and do a punch here, if I'm going to do a pie jump, I'm going to shift that. Even if I don't completely shift back, you know, I'm, I'm going to step that way. Always going to create that difference in weight in order to further generate more power from my structure. But that is not something that the, the Hakka Southern Star believes in. So if you look at these points, you can see what Hakka Star, although are closer to internal Star's belief, they are fundamentally not the same. Okay? Which is why, in my video on the four fundamental forces, I've said that any general internal Star needs to have these four forces. If you don't have these four forces, then you are not doing internal. And this is one of the examples of why. Right? You can have very close resemblance in terms of your weight, body position. But because you don't, you don't, they don't have the rebound force, it can't be classified as internal. So from this you can see that um, the northern external styles are very far from internal style. I mean far, I don't mean you know, good or bad, I mean the understanding are very different. Okay? And the southern style, very similar, but also very different. I mean the other thing that people often say, you know, in southern style like the white crane, they also shake, right? Uh, especially Zonghe, one of the, the, the four, the four cranes. Zong means to shake, so you can see also <laughs> shake and shake. And people say, you know, yeah, you know, look at that, that's like, you know, just like ch chain style. On the surface, yes, on the surface it looks like incorrect chain style. Okay, and I mean, I'm incorrect, I don't mean to say that the uh, white crane way of shaking is incorrect. Okay, they shake the way they believe in. But they but that way of shaking, if you see in, in the in chain style, is the incorrect way to shake in chain style. Right? Chain style don't actually supposed to shake like that. Um, this will be a, another topic for another day, I guess. But just know that chain style, people who shake in chain style, they're just from chain village and they just kind of um, lost their heritage and made up stuff later on. That's not how the chain style originally supposed to be like. Right? If you want to see how chain style originally supposed to be like, look at videos on Chen Zhonghua. Okay, I mean he has. Shake, but it's not that kind of shake, right? You can see it's very confined. It's about controlling each body joint and pushing force from the leg all the way to one angle into the hand. So it's not a wild, endless, directionless shake. It's to actually control the body to go into a single point for maximum effect. So, what, so I'm not saying the wide crane of shaking is wrong, but that's not how internal martial arts shake. Okay, so if someone says, that's the reason why they're similar, then that's not correct. Those shakes are not the way internal martial arts do, do things. Alright, so this is quite a long video, uh, longer than I expected, but this is kind of a topic that is slightly complicated. So I hope I've made sense, and if you have any questions, you leave it in the comment below, and I'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible. And let me say this again, right? I'm not saying internal style is definitely better than external styles. It all depends on you know how much time you put into training, how genuine is your teacher, how well you understand his teaching, and you know how good you actually practice them to make it your your own. 
These are always the foremost important factor when you come to determine whether or not you are a good or decent martial art practitioner, right? Style does make a difference, right? I don't believe in people who say, you know, the, you know any style is the same. No, it's not the same. But if, you, if you're given a good style and you don't put in the effort, you're not going to be good. And if you're given a bad style but you put in a lot of effort, you might be better than a person who had a good style but you know, didn't put in the effort. But chances are you're not going to be as good as someone who has a, a better style and trains just as hard. Right, so there is a difference between styles. But this is a style to style difference. It's not internal versus external. Okay? It's not muscle versus bones. So, you know, for example, the modern combat sports is a really great example of, um, of a great system of training within the external mentality. Okay? And I mean, by external, I mean they're different from internal. Okay, uh, so I mean, as you can see now, that external styles are not all, sh they don't all share the same principle. Okay? They have been called external styles because they're excluded from the principles that are believed by internal styles. Okay, so this is a process of people first finding a, a core, you know, a common belief among internal styles and then attempting to exclude everybody else who don't share that belief. So that's how this system of classification happens. Okay, that's not saying that all the external styles also share the same belief among themselves. That's not correct. Okay, but as far as non-internal style goes, modern combat sport is great. Um, some of the southern styles are also very good. Northern ones, not that good, right? Any that are decent, efficient, they definitely are doing sanda and not the authentic Muslim external martial arts. Alright, so that is at least my belief, you know, my point of view when it comes to style, or, you know, the style d d differences. Um, you might not believe that, which is also fine. Right, these things are opinionated, which is cool. But the fact is, okay, the way we define internal and external is based on what I've mentioned in this video. That cannot change, okay? A star can't be part of internal or part of external if it wasn't classified in that system I've just ma mentioned. So that part, there's no argument about. Whether a star is good or bad, that's up to, to opinion. Alright, so I hope this video has helped you on the understanding between internal and external. And yeah, like I said, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And if you find my videos helpful, please subscribe on Patreon, it will help me a lot. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Trison's Martial Art Channel.